Some of the aliens at Area 51 have tried to escape over the years, and today we're here to tell their stories. Retired senior scientist Boyd Bushman, who passed away in the summer of 2014, so about a decade ago, recorded a video shortly before his death in which he talked candidly about his personal experiences at Area 51 and his involvement there with alien technology, alien creatures, and their unique anti-gravity propulsion systems. During the video interview, Bushman produced many photographs showing the aircrafts, alien beings, both dead and alive, and their futuristic technology technologies, while disclosing never-before-told bits of information he garnered from the unearthly alien visitors. Spanning a 40-year career, Bushman was employed by Hughes Aircraft, General Dynamics, Texas Instruments, and Lockheed Martin, during which time he was awarded 26 patents — some are still classified, by the way — for his work on the Stinger. Formerly, the, no, formerly known as the Red Eye Missile System, laser-guided smart explosives, imaging systems, and magnetic-related technologies. His credentials are impeccable, which lends a lot of credibility to his claims. What are those claims? He's spoken to alien visitors and worked firsthand with their technology during his tenure at Area 51. During the interview, Bushman details an astonishing recollection made by a pilot involved with material recovery after a 1947 UFO crash. So what happened? The radar group had found a blip out over New Mexico and they wanted to assign the pilot to go check it out. So the pilot was out flying and he found the item and immediately communicated back and was like, first of all, I want you to tell me if there are any other airplanes flying in the area. Control was like, nope, just kind of you. The pilot was like, okay, second thing I want to know. Do I have authority to bring it down? They were like, why do you want to bring it down? He's like, well, I am flying the fastest thing that United States can make, and uh, that thing's getting ahead of me. I know he's either a friend or an enemy, and if he's leaving me, then he's an enemy. Therefore, I would like to bring it down. Well, lucky for him, he was granted authority. So once the craft was down, he flew past it, saw that there was a road on one side of a fenced area, so he managed to come down gracefully, landed his plane, and he cut across the fence. The door to the craft was open, and one of the alien beings was out, walking around. The other three aliens in the craft were already long dead. So our pilot knew it was going to be a while before the military got there, and he's like, I don't really want to be alone with that thing. So he got back in his plane and got out of there. He was never debriefed at the scene. He was just like, nope, nope, absolutely not. So back to our lovely witness today. He presented pictures of the alien beings he claims to not only have seen with his own eyes, but interacted with. He stated that the aliens were about four and a half to five feet tall, and at least 18 of the beings lived and operated at Area 51. One or two of them were actually 230 years old. The aliens explained to Bushman that there were two types of otherworldly beings, which were kind of similar to our 19th century cowboy wranglers and rustlers. So one group was kind of intent on guiding the human race, while other ones weren't so friendly. Hopefully, I never meet the not so friendly ones. Chris Augustin tours UFO conferences across the globe, giving the shocking story about how he has experienced missing time due to being abducted by aliens. Which, uh, yikes. Oh, and it all started with him going to Area 51. So in a video that was uploaded to the interwebs, we see Mr. Chris Augustin himself telling folks that he was like, I'm gonna go to Area 51. Because why? Well, he became obsessed with UFOs after seeing a mysterious black triangular craft on July 17th of 1999 in Washington Township of New Jersey when he was studying at school. On the day he goes to Area 51, parks his car, climbs a hill near the site, apparently it wasn't fenced off, and there was a black helicopter in the sky just flying around. And uh, it never really got close to him. After that, our lovely Mr. Augustine crossed the border into the base and wasn't challenged by anybody before leaving. Well, six months later, aliens are here. It was around 10 p.m., February of 2002. He was driving home from his girlfriend's place and he lost three and a half minutes while at the wheel. He then had a spike in psychic experiences, suffered a lot more abductions. He'd wake up with redness in his bed. There was a bizarre metal implant in his lower left leg that was placed there by the aliens. And at this conference, he was like, yep, this is what happens when you're abducted by an alien. So it's believed he must have made contact with something at Area 51 that has since followed him home and won't leave him alone. A very curious video showed up on YouTube back in 2011, showing a collection of leaked videos. And what's on those videos? Well, an alien being interrogated by a government agency. It's a gray type entity shown being interviewed and examined, supposedly as part of some diplomatic exchange. And he's from the Zeta Reticuli star system, sent as part of an envoy to discuss matters of mutual concern. As of September 2019, no extrasolar planets have been discovered in this system, according to government experts, but like, 
we know they can lie to us about that. So that's not really news. So if you don't know, what is Zeta Reticuli? So this is a wide binary star system in the southern constellation of Reticulum. From the southern hemisphere, the pair can be seen with the naked eye as a double star in very dark skies. Based on parallax measurements, this system is located at a distance of about 39.3 light years from Earth, and both stars are solar analogs that have characteristics similar to those of the Sun. And they belong to the Zeta Herculis moving group of stars that share a common origin. So just for that context, Back to the videos. So these aliens would be escorted by special officers and only meet with high-ranking officials. Although several aliens are claimed to have been present, the one most prominently featured was given the nickname Skinny Bob. This alien appears as a very thin, slouched over figure with an oversized bald head, slit-like mouth, large eyes that are very expressive, blinking, and he's got claw-like hands. There was apparently a whole series of interviews conducted with the creature between 1942 to 1969, but there's only a few clips on the internet that have managed to survive the test of time. The most well-known clip simply shows Skinny Bob sitting at a table, apparently in a telepathic interview, and then afterwards we see footage of him from head to toe, showing his disproportionately long arms and overall build. After that, we get a moment where you can see like Skinny Bob in a pool of some sort of liquid. That's where he slept. According to my sources, the aliens were filmed without their knowledge or consent, with a lot of documents supposedly describing an incident in 1961 when three of the beings realized they were being secretly filmed by a hidden device, which was considered a violation of their agreement. There was a treaty that stipulated that photographs and filming of said entities would not be allowed unless specific permission was given. The diplomatic exchange of it all matches up with what we know about Area 51 being a place for everything alien. In 1995, Ray Santilli, a London-based entrepreneur, released footage of an alien autopsy performed in 1947. Experts immediately ridiculed the footage as a hoax, and he was like, mm, okay, maybe this part is, but it's not a total hoax. Real footage did exist. In 1993 or 1994, he saw footage of the autopsy in its original form and brought it back with him to the UK. But within a year or so, it had completely deteriorated. So... Whoops. There were a couple of frames left over that could be used as reference. So what our witness did was restore the footage frame by frame over a very long period of time. Just wanted to restore what was a very damaged film. And seeing as a lot of footage of anything to do with Area 51 or Roswell has been redacted, destroyed, or heavily censored, seems believable. And finally for today, in Bob Lazar's 1989 interview, he mentioned working at a secret facility where alien technology was being reverse engineered, you know, being taken apart to figure out how it works, whether the Pentagon could duplicate it. And Bob's job was to help specifically with the reverse engineering of one of nine flying saucers, which were extraterrestrial in origin. So one of these, the one he called the sport model, was manufactured out of a metallic substance similar in appearance and touched to liquid titanium. Now the propulsion of the studied vehicle ran on an antimatter reactor and was fueled by the chemical element with atomic number 115, which it's a whole thing, but long story short, we can't make this as humans. So in another interview, when Bob actually appeared under his own name. He was like, yeah, this was at Area 51. Kind of wild stuff. And the craft he was working on was dismantled. The reactor he studied was topped by a sphere or semi-sphere, which emitted a force field capable of repulsing human flesh. Now this craft was split into two main levels. The reactor was positioned at the center of the upper level, with the antenna extending to the top, surrounded by three gravity amplifiers. These were connected to gravity emitters on the lower level, which can rotate 180 degrees to output a gravity beam or anti-gravity wave. So in 1989, Bob said the seats of the saucer he saw were approximately tiny human sized, in that he had seen alien cadavers of a corresponding size. Now, he doesn't have any pictures of them sadly, but they were there, they tried to get out, they didn't make it. The humans there said no. Well, that's it for me once again folks, I've been Alexa, your resident Yuki Spooky Girly, see y'all next time you lovely spooky people.